Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. We're going to do a, a one percenter going out to Milwaukee, and we're going to talk about a little update on the Milwaukee Outlaws Motorcycle Club. Um, just in the last week or two, there's been some court decisions related to some OG Wisconsin outlaws. I say Milwaukee, but I, I should probably be more specific, uh, Wisconsin. And the former uh, regional boss of Wisconsin, one of the most legendary outlaws uh, the state of Wisconsin's ever had, Kevin Spike O'Neill, had his plea for compassionate release uh, rejected last week. He will not be getting out of his life sentence has been locked up for about 26, 27 years at this point. And, and on a side to that, his top enforcer, a guy by the name of Randall Madman Miller, in a second or third Hail Mary attempt to get a compassionate release from his case, and it's the same case that, that took down O'Neill, um, has finally acknowledged, admitted, uh, taken accountability for his role in a very, very heinous, gruesome spring 1993 double murder that he was convicted of, that he never took responsibility for. And in his uh, most recent briefing filed uh, with his federal judge out of Milwaukee, looking for a compassionate release, he admitted, finally admitted to his role in, in that murder. They him and a guy named uh, Preacher, who were members of the, uh, I believe the state line chapter, which is where uh, Spike O'Neill was kind of between uh, Racine and, and Janesville, which was a state line chapter. But he was overseeing what was going on in Milwaukee, um, which at that time was being run by uh, Shock and Woody. And I think 007 was, was involved too. Uh, but Madman Miller and Preacher Schneider had gotten word that uh, a guy and his wife, an elderly couple that lived in McHenry County, uh, northwest suburbs of Chicago, and had a farm. And on that farm, they were, were known for selling motorcycle equipment type things. And um, they also were known to have cash on hand. Uh, I believe the the old uh, the wife uh, had like a some type of trinket shop on the property and madman miller decided he wanted to kill uh kill both of the this couple and and rob them they killed him but they couldn't find uh where the where the money stash was i guess Mil miller had robbed him of a thousand dollars a couple weeks before so he figured he knew where all the money was but they couldn't end up finding much money they walked away with like a 20 dollar bill but uh a 75 year old man and a seven year old woman were left dead, uh, beaten, bludgeoned, strangled, their throats cut, just very just vicious. Um, so Spike O'Neill and uh, Madman will not be coming home. Madman, despite putting in the acknowledgement uh, that he admits to, to taking part in that double homicide, uh, eventually had the the plea for compassionate release reject. So both Spike O'Neill and Mad Mad Miller were not coming home. Their case came down, I believe, in 98. They were convicted in, in 99, sentenced in 2000. Spike O'Neill was at the very tip of the spear in the 1990s in terms of the Hells Angels war with, with or sorry, in terms of the outlaws war with the Hells Angels um, in the Midwest. Uh, it was a, a, a bloody struggle for three or four years, bombings, shootings, and Taco Bowman, who was the international president of the Outlaws based in Detroit, um, empowered Spike O'Neill and guys like Matt Yeager uh, to you know, be his war generals. And uh, that area of Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana was where most of the, uh, the bloodshed was, was occurring a little bit in Detroit, a little bit down in Florida. But um, Spike O'Neill was 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 a you know a revered strong arm in Outlaws Nation, the Milwaukee, or I should say the Wisconsin 
contingent of outlaws became known as the wrecking crew. Um, their reputation preceded them. So, you know, that's kind of an update from old, and I'm going to finish with an update from new. I, I, I mentioned this, I think, a month or two ago uh, on another podcast, but uh, Milwaukee Jack, Milwaukee Jack Rosga, finishing up a prison sentence right now. He'll be home in two years. Uh, he was the national president uh, based out of the Milwaukee chapter, ran the whole Outlaws Nation from about 2005, six to 2011. And I'm told that right now he still has a lot of juice and is somebody that is advising all of the leaders that are on the uh, outside right now was in uh, quite frequent contact with Tommy O, uh, John er uh, Ehrman, the the boss, the alleged international president of the outlaws. Now he's in uh, locked up, uh, has uh, no bond and is facing a obstruction of justice case related to the alleged homicide of a federal witness in a, in a case tied to a strip club and the outlaws and the mafia uh, up in Western New York. A lot of that investigation that Tommy O was able to uncover his communications with Milwaukee Jack from behind bars. Milwaukee Jack has also been networking with uh, La Cosa Nostra, um, trying to you know firm up those ties as the outlaws are in the middle of a battle right now with the pagans. Um, there's peace talks with the Hells Angels. We know about that. But I guess the big, the big takeaway that I'm getting is that there is, I'm told, the potential that Milwaukee Jack could be returning to the throne as international president of the outlaws if Tommy O does not beat this case. And Milwaukee Jack gets out like he's supposed to in 2026 and he gets through all the, the paper. And when he's off paper, I'm told, you know, when he's in his early 70s, Milwaukee Jack could return and, and be king of all of outlaws nation in around the globe. So uh, that's my update. Milwaukee Jack might be behind bars, but he's still making some noise. And this is a guy that, you know, is universally beloved, respected and feared. And that is, you know, the ultimate trifecta when we're talking about underworld politics. So keep an eye out. Uh, but Spike in Madman will not be coming home. Try to do some more uh, content on um, Milwaukee Outlaws, maybe dive in a little bit into, into Shock and uh, Woody. And I think we're going to do something coming up on Gangster Report and possibly we'll do a, a video on the attempted assassination of M Minnesota Pat Motter, who was one of the leading members of the Hells Angels in the Midwest back in the 90s, fighting the war on the other side. And uh, O'Neill and company were going into Minnesota trying to kill him. They blew up uh, a truck didn't end up killing him and pat modern ended up uh leading the, the hell's angels in minnesota for 20 years turned a federal cooperator and has a book out so you might be talking about that in the future but right now that's our update about the milwaukee outlaws motorcycle club a lot going on in outlaws nation and we're giving it to you whenever it's breaking here on the og pod please like subscribe and share i'm scott bernstein og pod mm -hmm.